Anthony Ast. I am the video math tutor and welcome to basic math lesson number seven, units of measurement. Now before we get started, it is important that you go through the notes, print them up, have a chance to look at them, and then come back to the video and I'll take care of you. The basic unit of time is the second, defined as 9,192,631,770 oscillations of the atom of cesium-133. Let me give you an example of how long a second lasts. Here goes. Not very much time, isn't it? One minute is equal to 60 seconds. It's the time it takes for a minute hand on a regular clock to go from here to there. That's it. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. And that's the time it takes for the hour hand to move, let's say, from here to there. One day is 24 hours, which is the amount of time it takes for the Earth to revolve around its axis. One way of showing the passage of time is with a calendar. And I have this really cool air paramount calendar to show you. Seven days, seen right here, is one week. Fourteen days, or two weeks, is called a fortnight, something like this. Now, thirty days, seen right here, is called a month. Now, yes, some months have fewer days, some have more, but for mathematical purposes, let's say you have a word problem, you want to use the figure thirty. And of course, 12 months, or 365 days, is an entire year. One year is also equal to 52 weeks. Now a good way to remember that is that there's 52 playing cards in a deck. Mm. Now other units of measurement of time would be a leap year is 366 days. It's one extra day. One decade is equal to 10 years. A century is 100 years. And one millennium is the period of time it takes for me to do one of my review sessions. What? No? Oh, so sorry. No. It's, it feels that way, but you know, a millennium is equal to a thousand years. The meter is the basic unit of measurement of length. It is defined as the total distance a beam of light would travel in 1 299,792,458 of a second. Now here's a standard meter. Again, you can find something like this in your school or perhaps a department store or an office supply store. And it gives you a pretty good idea of what the length is right here. Now, if I divide this meter in 10 equal parts, each of those parts is called a decimeter. So one decimeter is equal to one-tenth of a meter. Now if I chop each of these decimeters in 10 equal parts, I'm going to get centimeters. So here we go. One centimeter is equal to one-tenth of a decimeter. And by the way, it's also one hundredth of a meter. Let's keep dividing this meter. Now, each of my centimeters is divided into 10 parts, so we now have what's called a millimeter. One millimeter is one-tenth of a centimeter. Really tiny. It's also one-hundredth of a decimeter and one-thousandth of a meter. Now, I want you to also keep in mind one meter is equal to 10 decimeters, 100 centimeters, and 1,000 millimeters. 
Now for units bigger than a meter, we can say that one decameter is 10 meters. One hectometer is equal to 100 meters. And one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Imperial units, those that are used in the United Kingdom, are not covered in this review, only the American system, so keep that in mind. Also, I'm only be covering the more typical units, not all of them. The yard is the basic unit of measurement of length. It is defined as 0 0.9144 meters. Now, if I divide my yard into three equal parts, each of these parts is called a foot. Here's some examples. Here's like a foot right here. And this little rainbow ruler that I made is a foot long. And you can also just buy just a cheap wooden ruler. But it's just one foot long. It's one third of a yard. Now, if you divide your foot into 12 equal parts, each of these little parts is one twelfth of a foot. This length right here is called an inch. I do the same thing right here. So, one inch is one twelfth of a foot. It's also equal to one thirty-sixth of a yard. One foot is equal to twelve inches. It's also equal to one third of a yard. One yard is equal to three feet. It's also equal to 36 inches. Oh, you caught me cleaning the yard. Sorry. What are units of measurement bigger than a yard? Well, for example, one mile is 1,760 of these yards. Nice and clean ones, too. It's also equal to 5,280 feet. Now, the figure of 5,280 feet pops up quite a bit in word problems, and that's a number you want to memorize. So now that we have both metric and U.S. customary systems of measurement, how do we convert from one form to the other? Well, it's very easy. There are some typical formulas that helps us do this, and here they are. Now let's do an example. I like to convert 38 inches, one of my favorite numbers, to centimeters. What do we do? Well, first, take a look at the formulas in your conversions list. Now, if you notice, there's something that says inches to centimeters, right here. So now let's use that information. 2.54 times 38 and again, you can just use a calculator or by hand, and you'll get an answer of 96.52 centimeters. Now, it's a little cumbersome to keep writing centimeters all the time, so now let's take a look at the abbreviations for all these units of measurement. The square meter is the basic unit of measurement of area. It is defined as a square whose sides are of length one meter. Now, 
Now, here's an example of a square meter. You get, you get all that right here? Okay, now, now I don't think this all fits in here. Uh, I hope you get the idea. One square millimeter is equal to one hundredth of a square centimeter. Now, let's take a closer look at that. And here's an example of a square millimeter. Yeah, right, right there. Uh, I might have, see that? Oh, here, this, this might help a little bit. See, okay, I'm probably scaring some of you guys. I better stop. One square centimeter, seen right here, barely, is equal to one hundredth of a square decimeter, which is right here. And one square decimeter is equal to one hundredth of a square meter. Now there's a number of educational companies that make these special whiteboards that have the square centimeters already printed on them. So it's kind of a convenient way to study area in your classroom. Now for units of area that are larger than a square meter, we have the following. One square decameter is equal to 100 square meters. One square hectometer is equal to 100 square decameters. One square kilometer is equal to 100 square hectometers. The square yard is the basic unit of measurement of area. It is defined as a square whose sides are of length one yard. Here's an example of a square yard. Okay, you can't see all of it in the video, but it's at least you have an idea of what I'm talking about. All right? Here we can see a square inch. It's one inch by one inch. A square foot is right here. One foot by one foot. Now this is very important. Do not confuse a square foot with a foot that's been squared. Okay? They're totally different. One square foot is equal to 144 square inches. One square yard right here is nine square feet. So you can see that easily each of these squares is one square foot. And this is also equal to 1,296 square inches. Here's a way of comparing visually a square yard with a square meter. See the outer white frame you can see here is the square meter. And of course the colorful squares is the square yard. Any questions? In some of my lessons in algebra, I will actually have this special grid on the board here and see this is actually in square inches. So it's a good example of area in action. Now what's an example of using square feet in the real world? Let me show you. Excuse me. <laughs> floor tile. That's right. In fact, check your floor right now. If it's not carpeted, most likely it's some kind of pattern that looks like this. One foot by one foot. I think my landlord is going to kill me. I better put this back. Now here are a couple other units of measurement we should know. One acre is equal to 4,840 square yards. One square mile is equal to 640 acres.
the cubic meter is the basic unit of measurement of volume. It is defined as a cube whose sides are of length one meter. One cubic millimeter is equal to one thousandth of a cubic centimeter. You can imagine a cubic millimeter is just well, like a grain of sand, for example. Here's what a cubic centimeter would look like. And it is equal to one thousandth of a cubic decimeter. And that's what this looks like. Here's a one cubic decimeter. And this is equal to one thousandth of a cubic meter. Now let's take a look at some other units of measurement that are larger than a cubic meter. One cubic decameter is equal to a thousand cubic meters. One cubic hectometer is equal to a thousand cubic decameters. One cubic kilometer is equal to a thousand cubic hectometers. The cubic yard is the basic unit of measurement of volume. It is defined as a cube whose sides are of length one yard. Here's one cubic inch. It is equal to one one thousand seven hundred twenty eighth of a cubic foot. Here's an example of a cubic foot. It is equal to one thousand seven hundred twenty eight cubic inches or one twenty seventh of a cubic yard. Now you may be wondering how many gallons would actually fit one cubic foot? Well, the answer is 7.481 gallons, which is this and almost two quarts. That's seven and a half gallons. Amazing. Huh? One cubic yard is equal to 27 cubic feet. A unit of measurement for volume that's rather interesting is the cord, which is used to measure firewood. Right here. It's equal four by four by eight feet, which is the same thing as 128 cubic feet. The kilogram is the basic unit of measurement of mass. It is defined as the mass of a certain cylinder made of platinum iridium kept in Sèvres, France. It is called the International Prototype Kilogram. One milligram is equal to one thousandth of a gram. One gram is equal to one thousandth of a kilogram. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. An example of a gram would be one of our little centimeter cubes that weigh one gram each. So a thousand of them put together is one kilogram. One metric ton is equal to a thousand kilograms, which is usually how I feel right after lunch. The pound is the basic unit of measurement of mass. It is defined to be 0 0.4535923737 kilograms. One ounce equals one sixteenth of a pound. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. One ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. By the way, the ton is also known as the short ton.
Oh. A slice of bread is an example of what an ounce is. Mm, good stuff. The liter is the basic unit of measurement of capacity, both liquid and dry. It is the volume of one kilogram of water under specific scientific conditions. Bottled water is a great example of what a liter is. Go to any supermarket and you'll find something like this. Maybe not exactly the shape, but it's a liter. One milliliter is equal to one thousandth of a liter also equal to one cubic centimeter. One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. It's also equal to one cubic decimeter. One kiloliter is equal to a thousand liters. It's also equal to one cubic meter. The gallon is the basic unit of measurement of liquid capacity. It is equal to 231 cubic inches. One drop equals 1 60th of a teaspoon. It's also equal to 1 360th of a fluid ounce. A teaspoon, like this, or something like this, let's say if you're cooking and measuring stuff, is equal to a third of a tablespoon, or 60 drops. It's also equal to 1 6th of a fluid ounce. One tablespoon, for example, something like this, or maybe not something like this, is equal to three teaspoons, or half a fluid ounce. It's also equal to one sixteenth of a cup. One fluid ounce is equal to one sixteenth of a pint. It's also equal to one thirty second of a quart. It's also equal to one one twenty eighth of a gallon. Oh, sorry. One cup like this, or maybe something like this, is equal to half a pint, also equal to eight fluid ounces. One pint, like of ice cream, mm -hmm, is equal to half a quart, it's also equal to 16 fluid ounces. Now where is that spoon? Mm -hmm. One quart is equal to a quarter of a gallon, that's where it gets its name from, it's also equal to two pints, which if you had two pints, you would probably have a stomach ache or brain freeze. It's also four cups, 32 fluid ounces, and a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, sorry. One gallon is equal to... Okay, I'm sorry, it's not full. <laughs> Got a little thirsty. Anyway, a gallon is equal to four quarts also equal to 128 fluid ounces. The units of dry capacity for the metric system are exactly the same as those for liquid capacity, so that's nothing else to cover.
Well, the bushel is the basic unit of measurement of dry capacity. It is equal to 2,150.42 cubic inches. I need to let you know that although the same names are used, the sizes are different for those in dry and liquid capacity. So keep that in mind. One pint is equal to one half of a quart. One quart is equal to two pints. It's also equal to one eighth of a peck. One peck is equal to eight quarts. It's also equal to one quarter of a bushel. One bushel is equal to four pecks. One dozen, like eggs here, is equal to 12. One baker's dozen is 13. Just add one more to the batch. One score is equal to 20. For example, the number of dots right here. One gross is equal to 144. It's 12 dozen, or a dozen dozen. Here's an example. I have 12 rows of 12 squares. One ream is equal to 500. For example, a ream of paper. One second is equal to one sixtieth of a minute. One minute is equal to one sixtieth of a degree. One degree is equal to one three hundred sixtieth of a circle. A great way to see angles is with an angle viewer. Here's one degree. Now if I move this over here, this is a right angle. It's also 90 degrees and a quarter of a circle. If I move this over here now, this is a straight angle, 180 degrees, and it's half a circle. A protractor is a typical way of measuring angles. Here's one type of protractor. Another is a full circle like this. The degree is used as the basic unit of temperature. However, there are several temperature scales commonly used. Two will be discussed here, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Let's first talk about degrees Fahrenheit. Here's the symbol. It's just a capital F, a little circle right there. Now, how do we get these degrees? Well, we look at the thermometer right here, and we designate right here the freezing point of water to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And up here, the boiling point I want to designate that as 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This difference is 180 degrees. If we break that up into 180 little parts, each of those little parts is 1 degree Fahrenheit. And that's how we get the scale. Now for degrees Celsius, right here is my symbol. And in a similar way, I designate the freezing point of water to be 0 degrees Celsius, the boiling point to be 100. So if I want a single degree, I have to divide this into 100 equal parts. Each of those little parts is 1 Celsius degree. Now a question comes up. How do we convert one of these systems to the other? Very easy. We just use a couple formulas. So let's do that next. If you're given degrees Celsius and want degrees Fahrenheit, use this formula to convert the values.
if you're given degrees Fahrenheit and want degrees Celsius, use this formula to convert the values. Now I won't do any examples of this type of conversion because I do this in detail in one of my algebra lessons. Well, we've reached the end of our lesson. Whew. I hope I was able to help. But if you have any questions, please do not hesitate and email me at this address right here below. And with that said, this is Luis Anthony Ust saying, keep studying. Bye-bye.